Hi guys, how are you keeping? I hope you're all doing really well. This video, as you can see from the title below, is all about hair. So this is my hair care, hair routine, where I dye my hair, what dye I use, etc, etc. All those burning questions you always ask me. This is everything hair care, how to be a good blonde, everything like that included. So I'm going to go through nearly every single product that I use on my hair things that I use to protect my hair etc. So this is going to be kind of an intense video. And if I forget anything or I didn't mention something that you wanted to know you can ask me down below. So I'm going to start off with washing my hair I suppose. Kind of stage one shower washing hair. What products I use on my hair. So I'm going to go drugstore first and these are the herbal essence. These are, what are these ones called? Ignite my colour. Are these both Ignite my colour? Yeah, they're both Ignite my colour. So they look like that. I'm sure you all know what Herbal Essence look like. Ignite my colour is the one I like. There's also an orange one. I can't remember the name of it, but I also use them as well. These are my inexpensive hair products. They also smell delicious. They are the ones that make my hair kind of smooth, silky. They don't over... over they're not heavy on my hair, you know, they don't leave a lot of product residue and things like that. They're my definitely my favourite drugstore products and they're just so affordable. They leave my hair smelling delicious. It, they keep my hair clean for a few days. I know it says ignite my colour, so it's to keep vibrant colour in your, in your hair. But I've never really noticed ever over the years a product like this doing anything for my colour, you know, keeping it or anything like that. I just use it simply because they're incredible products, they make my hair smell delicious and they are not heavy and they don't weigh down my hair. They're just really, 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 really lovely. So I kind of generally always would use Herbal Essence. I've used it since I was young. And the only thing I will do is switch up the Herbal Essence that I buy. One week I could buy this dark pink one, then I could be buy the blue one, then I could buy the orange one. You know, it, it just depends on how I'm feeling that week. I'll try and switch it up. For my higher end products, I use these. These are the TG Bedhead and they look like that. They are incredible. They're the dumb blonde, so these are kind of tailored for blonde hair. They smell like, oh, like just sweets and they just smell, oh, lovely. Like vanilla and sweets and... Oh, just everything, everything beautiful they smell of. Um, my boyfriend bought me these for Christmas um, and I had them before. But I really, 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 really do love these. They're really, really nice. It's just the price of them is ridiculous. I think this is 17 euro. This is the, the conditioner. I think the shampoo is about 18 euro. I mean, it's just ridiculous to me for hair products. So I've had these since Christmas and the shampoo is... I think there's half of it left. The conditioner is, there's a teeny, teeny, teeny bit left. I'd get another hair, one wash of my hair in it, whereas I'd get a few out of the shampoo. But I did really, really love these. I love the smell of them. I love the way they left my hair feeling, they didn't weigh it down, etc. So I would repurchase these. Also, I've used them, you know, I'd use them every third or fourth time I wash my hair so I'm only using them maybe once a week maybe even less than that so that's why I'm getting so long out of them and I really do love them the Herbal Essence obviously because it's cheaper I use it more so I really do love these and would definitely recommend them to a blonde I know they do the, the brunette version as well don't know anything about that because I don't have brunette hair and I've never tried it but I'm sure they work just as well so as I am a blonde we can see it's good to kind of tone your hair. Sometimes when you have your hair colour in for so long, let's say it's so long between in between colours, you can get that brassiness. It's kind of like an orange tone. I'm sure most blonde girls would know what I'm talking about. That's kind of like brassiness. You'd get it here and there and in patches and sometimes it can be all over. It's not attractive. Brassy, over-processed, kind of yellow looking. These bad boys are what I use to prevent that. So you can see that my hair is like nearly like it's silver. It's so blonde. Like it's so, it's not quite platinum. Like I wouldn't say I'm platinum. It's just I'm quite blonde. And I to keep the blondness that it is, like you can kind of see there's little bits of, not yellow, but you can just see that there's darker bits of blonde in there. What I use to keep it toned or to kind of reduce the brassiness is these. These are the Lee Stafford Beach Blondes. 
This is a Pro Blonde Complex Bleached, partly bleached highlighted or for bleached hair. And what it does is it just um, knocks out brassiness, um, canary yellow tones. So exactly what I just said, it kind of removes that. This is potent. This is lethal stuff. I put this in my hair and my hair was purple after the tiniest like little amount. You have to be really careful with how much you use with this. So I've been trying to kind of get the purple out of my hair. Now it is gone at this stage but the first time I ever use it, it really is potent. Like it's it's scary how potent it is for such a affordable product. These are 8 euro a piece so 16 together and usually Boots would have a buy one get one half off or buy one or buy three but two for three for two sorry stuff like that so boots always does kind of have promotions and stuff and I usually pick them up when they're on promotion because you know it's nice to kind of get another product other than you've never tried before when you're picking up your conditioner and shampoo so this one is obviously the shampoo and it's quite perfect I don't know if you're ever going to be able to tell but this is a blonde strand of hair so this is from an extension obviously and this is my extensions that are in my head right now so I don't know if you can tell that this one is kind of a little bit yellowier whereas this one is visibly more silver I don't know if you can see them together just if the sun is kind of catching them you can see that that's quite yellow whereas that's silver this my whole head my whole hair extensions were always this color this is honey blonde from the foxy locks and I put this Lee Stafford toning into all my hair. I wanted to keep a bit just to show you the actual effect that it had. So I don't know if it's visible. I don't really know if you can tell. Not in person can I tell. But you can kind of see it a little bit in camera. That's just a little bit yellow. And you can kind of see where that's silver. Now I did overtone some of the hair. So I will have to wash them again. But it comes out after you wash them. So that still tell you how potent it is. It's turned something that's kind of a yellowy blonde. Into a little bit of a silvery kind of blonde. Very very potent for the light hand. Don't be using too much. Remember the first day I was like why isn't it coming out? It comes out very very slowly. Obviously for that reason they don't want you to come out with purple hair. So be careful if you are buying this. Again, this is a product for blonde um, girls or guys, so it's it's for people who are trying to tone their blonde hair. So the next thing I do, once my hair is, you know, wet and I've washed it and, and cleaned it and towel dried it, I will, when I get out of the shower, obviously I'll need to dry my hair. Now I do one of two steps. I either apply an oil, which is one of these. These are the oils that I always would only ever use. They're from Hask. This one is the Argan Oil and it looks like that. And this one is the Macadamia Oil and it looks like that. Now, I know that there is, you know, Macadamia Oils. I know they come air or Macadamia Creams and masks and things like that for your hair. And also they come in oils. They're quite expensive. They're usually around the 30 euro mark. I don't know how much they are in dollars or any other currency. But I know that they are around the 30 to 35 euro and you can buy them online and things like that. So they're quite hard to get your hands on. I went to my hairdresser and I was saying to her, you know, should I get the, the macadamia oil and the argan oil and things like that from the, the more expensive brands? And she said to me, have you ever heard of Hask? And I said, believe it or not, I have because Hask actually contacted me last year and sent me a couple of little samples of things and I fell in love. I had tried them before, loved them then, but products that I hadn't ever tried, they sent me and loved them. My hairdresser told me that Hask is quite similar nearly identical to those the brands that are marketing them at a larger price and she just said that they're exactly the same there's no difference she's tried both of them she's a hairdresser she's been training for years and she said that she has never never noticed a difference so after I get out of the shower my hair is towel dried towel, towel dried I will rub one one of these so not both of them I'll just pick one and I'll put it from like my ears down through my hair. Obviously I'm wearing my hair extensions so my hair stops. Where does it stop? Around here. So my natural hair stops it there and then I will, I'll rub the oil in through the length of my hair. Then I will take either my Tresemme heat protectant. This is a heat protectant for up to 230 degrees protection. The best heat protectant I've ever tried in my days. I've tried so many. 
I have fa they have failed in my expectations. This bad boy, he is a keeper. So I love the Tresemme heat defense. It's so inexpensive, about four or five euro in Tesco's boots, wherever you're shopping around. So I will either use that one. So I've put my oil in my hair and I've run it through the length. Then I just spritz my hair with a bit of protectant because I'm gonna go and use a hair dryer, obviously. I would either use that or I'll use this heat protectant. This is the Elnet Satin. This is also a styling spray. So it's a heat styling spray and it creates volume. So it's a heat protectant technology and locks out flyaways and humidity. But they're great. Like I really think that for such an inexpensive product, they really do great work. And I have tried more expensive ones, different brands, and I always kind of go back to my Tresemme in particular. The Alnet is great as well, the L'Oreal spray. I showed it before in a haul and I really, really enjoyed it. But this is nearly out, so I'm going to have to buy another one. So I would actually repurchase it. So I really love these for heat protector. So then sometimes I feel like my hair is quite, not damaged, but I just feel like it's a bit dry. It's a bit weak. It's a bit limp. There's not really much going on in it. It's quite like... There's no texture, there's no volume to it, There's it's just lank horrible. So then I will use a conditioner. Now there's one of two that I would use, either the bedhead one, the Dumb Blonde leave-in conditioner. Now I don't leave it in, like all day. I find if I put it in my hair when it's wet, it can leave it quite heavy, so I don't do that at all. Uh, what I will do is I will pump it out when my hair is kind of either damp or dry. I won't ever do this when my hair is wet and I will put it into my hair and leave it up in a mask for about 15 to 20 minutes and then I'll rinse it out. So I do not leave this in even though it's a leave-in conditioner. I just find it's too heavy on my hair. It just drags it down and leaves it worse than before nearly. It's just not great. So this locks in like moisture and things like that and I do find that it does help. One of the other ones that I do love is the macadamia oil from Hask. And this is a mask again and I will do the exact same thing. I will put it into my hair when it is dry or when it is damp. And then I will obviously work it through the hair, leave it up for 15 to 20 minutes, wash it out and I feel like my hair is a little bit more conditioned, a little softer and it's a little treated. I will only do this like maybe once every two weeks. Try not to overdo them because sometimes they have like keratin and things and that and them. too much keratin can snap your hair off. The other product that I would use I don't have to hand is the Aussie, I think it's a, either a three minute miracle, I think that's called the, the Aussie three minute milk, miracle, ugh. the Aussie three minute miracle, that's what it's called and I would use that as well. So if I'm out of either one of these two or I just don't feel like these two, the Aussie one is another. That's what I'll do every 10 days, we'll say, to treat my hair if it's feeling a bit dry. Now it doesn't always need a hair, a deep conditioner or anything like that. It might not necessarily need it so I just don't do it. It's only if I ever, if I need it, I will put the deep conditioner in. So next for hair brushes, this is the only hair brush I use. This is called the Tangle Tweezer. Featured it in my April favourites and I know it's going to be a yearly favourite for me. I bought it in March, maybe, maybe even February and I love it so much. I use it all the time. I bring it with me in my bag just in case I need to brush my hair. I know it's weird, but I need to get another one, a travel one maybe. It's just so good. I've shown before like how it just glides through your hair. It just takes out any knots and you can see like it's so smooth on the hair. It doesn't drag, pull, pull out hair. Obviously if hair is about to fall out, it will fall out anyway, but you shouldn't be dragging on your hair, especially when it's damp and things like that. You'll damage, snap it, it'll cause then little bits, you know, to be, like you can see their little flyaway bits at the top. It'll just cause snapping and things. If you're reefing a, a hairbrush through your head, like it's, it's not good. So I use that one. Another hairbrush that I would commonly use would be a brush like this. As you can see, the bristles are quite dense on it. It looks like that from the side. It's, I don't know what you call them. I think they're just back combing brushes. So what you do with it is you literally brush the hair back and it kind of creates a bit of volume and obviously you brush out the bird's nest, you don't want to leave it in. If you want to see a complete video on back combing, I can link it right here. I did a back combing video and just that's exactly how I back comb. Other people's interpretations might be obviously different. I find that this brush is great at back comb and just kind of gathers the hair and stuff. It's really easy to bring with you as well because it's quite small. So you can just pop it in your bag and have it on the go. Now for hairsprays. The only hairsprays I ever use are the L'Oreal El Nat Satin. This is celebrating 50 years. I think this is just a limited edition bottle. It has like a pink thing. It's not the nicest smelling hairspray. I have smelled 
ones that are nice. So the VO5 one in particular is very nice, but it's not great for hold. I'd rather have, you know, not a great smell for a couple of minutes, but the hold throughout the night. So that's why I go for this one. This is quite large as well. Then I also have the Wella Silverkin, and this is the maximum hold. So this is number four, the pink labelled one. I just think that these two hairsprays are the best on the market. They're the ones that I like the best. I love the VO5, the smell of it and stuff like that, but it just doesn't do as good enough job. I don't think there's really any other hairsprays that I kind of drift towards. I just, I really do like that VO5 one as well, but like I said, the hold on it isn't great, so maybe I need to get a, a better strength in that one, but for the most part, I really love the Elnette Satin and the Wella Silverkin in the strength number four. So after going through all the products, I'm going to talk a little bit about my actual hair. So I wear hair extensions, as you can see. I wear the Foxy Locks hair extensions. They're created by a girl here on YouTube called Imogen. She has her own channel and things like that. They're the hair extensions that I use. So the hair extensions that I've been using for the last about six, seven months. Really like them. The ones I used before were an unbranded name and I also used Hairspray as well which are I don't think I don't know if Hairspray is an Irish company but I use Hairspray hair extensions as well and the same with them and the other ones that I use I didn't they weren't great quality these are much better quality they're quite thick and they're really easy to you know put in and stuff the only thing would if you've never tried hair extensions before they can kind of drag on your hair and they're quite heavy and stuff like that so that feeling isn't for everybody and if you don't like that you're probably not going to wear hair extensions. The colour that I got are honey blonde but like I said they're not honey blonde anymore. The reason being is because I've toned them and used that um, Lee Stafford shampoo on them so they're a little bit whiter or a little bit silverier than they originally were when I purchased them. Now I think I would go back and buy the Foxy Locks again. Obviously I'd get a different colour. I think that they were brilliant quality. They really really have lasted really well. My expectations weren't great of them. I knew that they were good but a lot of girls on YouTube had said when I was looking at reviews and stuff that after a little while they get a bit grubby and they don't look as good as they do. I mean that's just if you don't mind your hair extensions that well that's what will happen. If you want I can do a separate video all about hair care on your extensions. You know you kind of treat them just like your normal hair but a little bit better. So before this video gets completely and utterly out of hand because it's going to be so long I knew it was anyway because hair it's not really something you can talk about in two minutes. I want to talk about my hair cut, colour and where I get it done. So my hair cut, it was originally that the layers were ridiculously short. These layers that are kind of grown out now, they were only about like an inch long and I used to kind of push my hair back up and they used to kind of stand up. That was about three years ago. So they've kind of obviously grown out a little bit since then. So my hair cut, when I go in there, I just say, can I have a trim and can you just trim my fringe? I always have a side fringe. It's quite long, so I kind of brush it to the side. I don't like... I've had the fringe where it goes across your face like that. I don't like that. And I don't like my face without a fringe. So I, d I just don't think it suits me. I don't like a middle split either on my on me. I just think it's really not nice. I wish I could carry it off because I think there's so many people who really carry it off really well. So I always split my hair to the side. It just naturally splits like that because I have a cow's lick. So even if I push my hair over like that, you can kind of see it just... It doesn't really want to go, it wants to flick back over that way. So that's just the way that my hair grows and there's nothing I can do about it. So my split always has to be that side. So finally my hair colour that I get. I get it done in a hair salon. I don't do it myself. I've never, ever, ever done my hair myself except for when I was about eight and I cut my hair myself because I wanted a fringe, a side fringe. That's when they came in and I thought I could do it myself. I thought I was a hairdresser and I cut my fringe all lopsided and then I decided to cut my sister's hair and that it was a good idea for her to cut her hair from now on. So mum told us that if we ever cut our own hair again she would, in not so many words, go crazy at us but she told us that it was okay if we wanted to do Barbie's hair so we used to give Barbie kind of layers and mohawks and stuff like that so that's where we learned how to do our own hair so I kind of took the lesson from my mum when I was eight not to touch my own hair after that so I get my hair done professionally I get it done in a place called Wavelengths in Mullingar and I get a blonde dye in it so Vicky my hairdresser she does it and I just go in and I say Vicky just my colour so I actually don't even know what my colour is because I just always say to Vicky my colour again she's like do you, what do you want this time and I'm just like my colour so 
It originally started out with highlights. That's what I got when I was 13. I got blonde highlights. But when I was 13, I originally got red highlights because I thought they were the bomb diggity. But then I realised they weren't that great. So later on that, the next time I got my hair done, I decided to get blonde streaks. And I just kind of always got blonde streaks every time I went. And it eventually built up to be this this blonde. I went dark when I think I was about 17 and I hated it. I went dark all on the bottom and I hated it. So now I just get a full head of blonde highlights. I think it's bleach. I presume it's bleach and that's just my colour. It's the colour that I always get and it's become like my go-to colour. My hair has never been damaged from bleach because I don't dye my hair that frequently. I dye my hair I'd say about every three and a half months. I get a long time out of my hair. My hair doesn't grow that much. It's been about two and a half months. No sorry, it's been about a month and a half since my last hair dye. About six weeks, seven weeks and I mean I have root obviously but I mean it's not anything I can't live with. I think it's kind of nicer. I think when you have like solid block of blonde hair on me it doesn't really go so that's basically everything you need to know about my hair every product I use under the sun my hair type color everything like that I have really fine baby hair so it's really 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 fine now bleaching has never like I said damaged my hair but I take care I take very good care of my hair so it's all probably about that I don't use too much products I don't you know switch up my products too often with things like herbal essence I'll switch up the smell and then I might use every every second day I'll use maybe a different shampoo or a different smell but that's kind of it like that's probably the only thing that I switch up don't really switch up too much don't often try too much in my hair I have tried maybe them dusting powders and stuff like that that'll be kind of the maximum amount of it so that's basically it that's my hair care in detail I knew this video was going to be so long and I'm so sorry if you were you know waiting for something really exciting to happen but thanks so much for watching to this stage and you know it's great give the video a thumbs up if you did like my hair care and I can do something maybe like my face care or my night routine face wise or something like that or I don't know what else whatever else you'd like to see routine wise so I'll talk to you in my next video then bye